So there's been a, 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 a storm on the right in the United States over the last couple of days. And this has been brewing for a long time, and I kind of have predicted it for quite a while. The general view is that, um, that the right in the United States, the Republican Party conservatives, are pro-Israel and, uh, and will support Israel and will stand by Israel. The general view is that Trump will be a pro-Israel president and that MAGA is ultimately pro-Israel. And uh, some of that is based on the, uh, uh, the fact that the, among evangelicals, uh, evangelicals are very, very pro-Israel for religious, bizarre religious mystical reasons. I have warned people for a long time about relying on evangelicals and, um, and relying really even on, on, on the right in the United States, certainly on the MAGA. Uh, given that uh, their motivation around supporting Israel is based in religion, in faith, ultimately in mysticism, you know, that you know, that uh, uh, dedication, if you will, that support for Israel could change like that. And since October 7th, we have noticed a number of people on the right not being particularly friendly towards Israel and, 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 and talking against Israel and against support for Israel from, from, a, variety of different, uh, from a variety of different perspectives. A variety of different perspectives. And... Um, You know, and, and you know, there's the big split, for example, at the Daily Wire between Candace Owen, or how it was, Candace Owen's been fired, but between the Daily, uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, the Daily Wire and um, uh, Ben Shapiro and Candace Owen. And uh, there's no question that much of that was because of Candace Owen's uh, not supporting Israel and, and indeed supporting the Palestinians and, and giving, a, giving a voice to pro-Palestinians and, uh, you know, denying the horrors of October 7th and, and being an apologist for Hamas. And uh, the amount of support that Candace generated from this position by many, many, many people on the MAGA right was truly astounding. I mean, she wasn't a lone voice out there, but she was generating significant, significant support. Uh, and uh, we've seen it across I, I showed you Joe Rogan, and I don't know Joe Rogan is MAGA or right, but certainly Joe Rogan has influence on the right. And we saw Joe Rogan calling what Israel is doing in Gaza uh, a genocide. And of course, I've talked about Tucker Carlson, and, and there are many, many others on the right that have expressed anti-Israeli uh, ideas, sentiments, and, uh, and uh, you know, of course, the libertarians are... are particularly kind of what you'd call the right libertarians, the libertarians who tend to be on the right, are very anti-Israel. Uh, anti and uh, this should worry anybody who supports Israel. Uh, and uh, w what you could see uh, across every demographic, and ac but across every political orientation, is a steady, steady decline. Uh, among Americans in support for Israel to the point where today a majority of Americans uh, think Israel's gone too far, think Israel's in the wrong, uh, and, and in a sense, not explicitly, but in a sense, implicitly supporting the Palestinians. Anyway, uh, Tucker Carlson did an interview yesterday which has created quite a stir because, uh, you know, Tucker uh, interviewed yesterday a, a, a Christian Palestinian a Christian a Palestinian from Bethlehem uh, who was super critical of Israel, accused Israel of attacking Christians, accused Israel of discriminating against Christian Arabs both in Israel and in the West Bank and Gaza, accused Israel of killing Christians. Tucker seems to have bought into this completely. Uh, and, uh, and you know how Tucker does it, uh, but, but ele you know, emphasized these concerns, suggested that the United States should stop supporting Israel in any way because Israel was anti-Christian and attacking Christians, um, bought into, didn't challenge this reverend, Reverend Muntha Isaac at all, 
um, about his claims regarding Israel's treatment of the Christians. Uh, you know, uh, statements about Israel's uh, targeting of Christians that have no basis, really no basis, in reality. I mean, uh, so let's just take, uh, you know, one of his claims, which is the claim that, um, that uh, because of, uh, of, of, you know, uh, the, Jewish, the Israeli occupation of the West Bank, uh, the, the, the Christian population uh, within Bethlehem has been uh, decimated, Christians are being, uh, are being uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, discriminated against. This is completely counterfactual. The reality is that before the Palestinian Authority took control of Bethlehem, the Palestinian con uh, Authority controls Bethlehem. Bethlehem, of course, a holy site for Christians. Christians were a majority there. They're now a, s a small minority. The Palestinian Authority has been Islamizing the city, taking control over every aspect of Bethlehem. It is not Israeli occupation that is the issue. It is the Palestinian Authority and the ever-growing influence of uh, Islamic, uh, Islamic uh, Islamism, Islamic totalitarianism, Hamas-like ideologies in the West Bank that have created, uh, you know, a, a Bethlehem today that is a vast majority Muslim when it used to be Christian. Christians are basically left. Now, this is not unusual in the Middle East. Over the last 20 years, really over the last, you know, since, uh, since over the last 50 years, the Christians of Lebanon used to be equal numbers to the Muslims. Christians of Lebanon have left. They are now closer to 20, 30 percent of Lebanon when they used to be about 50. Uh, the Christians from Syria have left. Christians from Iraq have left. Uh, Christians all over the Middle East have left. There's been a huge outmigration of Christians as the Middle East has become more serious about its Islam. Same thing is happening in the Palestinian territories. As the Palestinian territories become more committed to the Islamic ideology, so, uh, you know, Christians uh, are leaving. Now, uh, you know, the, this, this reverend just repeated claims that are just untrue. Uh, claims about Israeli snipers killing civilians in a church, which have been refuted. Um, you know, just, just story after story that he's making up or repeating things that are known now to be false, to try to establish that Israel is anti-Christian and committing horrors against Christians. Now, you know, uh, Christian Arabs live in Israel. Uh, they have equal rights. Churches are, uh, have the same kind of religious authority as, as uh, mosques and uh, synagogues. They, they have, uh, uh, you know, they, they have control over uh, there's complete freedom of religion, in other words, in Israel. Uh, it, this is completely made up. Now, it turns out that this preacher, this reverend, um, praised Hamas for October 7th, or at least did not denounce them. He used some slightly ambiguous language to describe them. Uh, this is a man who hates Israel, who despises the state, who wants the state of Israel to disappear, he is uh, on the side of the radical Islamists and on the side of the Palestinian Authority in their wish to eradicate the state of Israel. Tucker Carlson not only gave him a platform, but, uh, you know, uh, 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 amplified it and emphasized, emphasized that American foreign policy should be guided by whether uh, a country's attitude towards Christians. So, so uh, you know, Tucker says... At the start of the, of the program, he said, a consistent but also never noted theme of American foreign policy is, is that it is always the Christians who suffer. Really? Really? I guess, I guess Russian Christians are worth more to Tucker than Ukrainian Christians. Yeah. I guess the, the, uh, the persecution of Christians by regime after regime in the Middle East 
is not worth commenting on except when the United States is involved. And then he adds when, quote, when there's a war abroad that the United States is funding, it is Christians who tend to die disproportionately. Note how Tucker has become obsessed with Christians, Christianity. He's become, I mean, this has been a theme for Tucker for quite a while now. He's really gone off the deep end in terms of his Christian nationalism, uh, national conservatism, really bad. Um, uh, you know, and, and then he goes after, he, he spends his time going after evangelical evangelicals in the United States for their support of Israel. He says you shouldn't be supporting Israel. Israel persecutes Christians, and yet you care more about the Jews than you do about Christians. Stop supporting Israel. I think you're going to see a bigger and bigger voice for this point of view, and you're going to see evangelicals shift. Already, that shift exists in young evangelicals who are much more sympathetic to the Palestinians than they are to the Israelis. Altruism demands it, ultimately. Um, and you're going, to see, um, you're going to see a significant weakening of support for Israel uh, from the right. This part of the right that is anti-Israel and, at least in some cases, anti-Semitic, is growing in influence. The right is, 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 is being completely intellectually corrupted. And those of you, I don't know if Scott is on today, those of you who want alliances with these creeps, want alliances with these people, um, not me, I don't want to have anything to do with the Tuckers of the world and the American new right, the anti-Semitic, anti-Israeli, anti-American, most importantly, anti-American new right, hate the Constitution, hate the Declaration of Independence, hate individual rights. That is Tucker Carlson. Um, so, uh, yes. So Tucker gave a platform to this guy. Uh, and um, conservatives are attacking him. Like the pro-Israel conservatives are attacking him uh, all over the place. Uh, this is going to, I think Israel is going to be a, a real um, battle. Uh, within the conservative movement, you've got the, the uh, Candace Owen and Tucker Carlson uh, and uh, wing of, uh, of the new right. Uh, and uh, there are going to be many else who join this wing uh, and who are going to advocate against Israel, against American support for Israel. You've got uh, the, the old evangelicals, just like the older left that supports Israel, whereas the young evangelicals and the young left hate Israel. And uh, right now, again, a majority of Americans uh, think Israel is in the wrong when it comes to Gaza. And uh, this is ultimately a great, a great tragedy. And, uh, you know, we will see, uh, we will see what, uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens if, if, if Trump wins and how, how MAGA, wh what position MAGA takes. Remember that Marjorie Taylor Greene, one of the leaders of MAGA in Congress, <laughs> I can't even believe I said that. She's a complete wacko. Uh, remember her with the Jews with lasers? And I mean, she's a complete nutcase. Anyway, she is one of the leaders of the Republican Party these days. Uh, she's not exactly pro Israel, not, not ultimately. Anyway. Uh, it'll be interesting whether this hurts Tucker or ultimately helps Tucker, whether this uh, increases the kind of anti-Israeli, anti-freedom wing of uh, the uh, Republican Party.